Hey everyone, welcome to Interfaring World Learner. Today in this video, I will be sharing what exactly is law and economics. Law and economics, these are two most important things that we really need to study in economics. So law and economics, it is nothing but economical analysis of law. What does it mean? It means application of economical theories in law. Now let's try to understand it in a better way. Let's say government make a policy. Okay, government parts passed a legislation, and uh, then we we will try to find out whether this is cost effective. Okay, now to check it, we need the economical theories. Okay, to check it in better way, whether this is effective, whether this is working in properly, whether this is we can use to trade off with something else, whether it is cost effective. To check that thing, we need the economical policies. Okay, so. Let's take an example with uh, example so that we will be try uh, we will be able to understand it in better way. Let's say government make a policy that you all must have to wear the helmet whenever you're just going for whether for the one or uh, one I mean like one kilometer two kilometer okay. So you will must have to wear the helmet okay. Government make the policy. Now we will need to find out whether this is affordable okay. Whether this is cost effective, whether this particular law is or this particular legislation is decreasing the accidental cases. If it is not doing so, then this is economically inefficient. Okay, and if it is just doing so, then this is economically efficient. Okay, now uh, and even we can just really predict that which law will be promulgated in the future. Okay, so sometimes what happens that this politics, okay, this politics and economics, these two things overlap. How? Now, just as you know that our politics is working through law. Okay, like uh, like IPC, Constitution, Criminal Procedure Code. So all these things are just like politics, and politics for no, is nothing but Constitution. Okay, because obviously politics are state government, central government. This all the guys are working under law, and. This politics is making our economical policies, monetary policy. How exactly we will work with these economical theories? We are trying. We are trying to understand how exactly our politics is working and how exactly our economy will work. How we can just really improve our GDP and how exactly we can be uh, we can become an economical leader. Okay. So as you know, politics and economics is related, related, and politics and law is exactly directly related. So that means this law and this economics are related. I think this is clear to you. Now let's try to find out what exactly is history of law and economics, and how exactly it came in picture. In 18th century, Adam Smith gave a theory, economical effect of merchandise legislation. That was the first law and economics theory given by any person in the history, and that person was Adam Smith. Now let's try to think and let's try to find out how exactly this economics is related to one of the biggest part of law, that is judiciary. How exactly this economics is related to judiciary? Let's take an example, okay, to make it a bit interesting. Let's say a crime is committed, okay, a crime is committed against a person. Now this crime is infringing three laws of the, or three courts, as a constitution and uh, and torts and uh, IPC. These three things are infringed due to this crime. Now he goes to any uh, like a court and he just say like give me the justice. Now court won't just take the three proceedings because they are lacking of resources. We as you know these days we are lacking of judges and. Uh, as we have the limited resource, we, what the judge will do, he will take any one, I mean like any one thing and then he will take the proceeding on that thing, okay, and he will give his verdict. Now in the future, if similar came, uh, case comes, what he will do, he will take this previous proceeding and, give, and will give his judgment later in the future, okay. So did you see that how exactly this judiciary worked economically? How exactly he took the uh, economics okay he took the economical theories okay so this economics and this judiciary how it worked together and how exactly we just uh, gone through this lacking of resources and we just like uh, get ahead of that thing with the help of economics now there's one more thing like in our market oriented economics there are two conditions one condition can be if the property is privately owned and second condition can be if the 
I mean property is economically free or this is public okay for public now if it is private then that is of a, that is not of our matter and we don't really want to have it so just like take in the pocket okay now if something is public and something is free then what exactly will happen if it is subjected to law if this economically free in the in our economically I mean like market oriented economics if something is economically free then it needs to be subjected to law because if it is not subjected to law then that will take a huge social cost okay so that is why why we need to make the law legislations legal policies for uh, for anything that is for public in our market oriented economics did you see that how exactly in our economics this law makes a big role and plays a big and huge role that we can't just really eliminate or we can't just really think that are unavoidable okay now at the last and end of this uh, video i will just sharing one more thing by which you can clear, clearly say that our economics is nothing but the law in our constitution spring preamble if you have seen there's one line that is justice social economical and political justice social economical and political justice economical did you see economical justice this is nothing but law and economics i think that is this is clear to you if this is so then please do share it with your friends and like share and subscribe and that's all bye